Hello and welcome to another session of Git Python Maintenance, it's Byron speaking. And we are handling issue 295, fetch hangs with authenticated Git repo and credential helper enabled, but not yet started. Okay, so let's have a closer look at this. I'm running Git Python 032 RC1. Uh, yeah, quite old. I think that's that, that might be coming with the package manager on Ubuntu 14, maybe possibly, I don't know. My git config has these lines, credential helper, cache timeout. Uh, I've never done the problem to the script. Create remote and fetch. Wow, amazing. I'm, I'm just saying amazing because yeah, probably this is his debug code, right? I was thinking, damn it, why would you have such a Python script? Because that could much be much easier done in a shell, but I suppose it's really just for uh, tracing the bug. After I'm prompted for my username and password, the script hangs. If I remove my git config, um, the script doesn't hang. Also, if the git credential cache daemon process already happened to be running successfully, the script doesn't hang. Yeah, because the credentials are pulled from the daemon then, huh? Um, the broader context of this is that I'm running salt with the Git Python backend and getting hangs of the credential helper daemon isn't already running. Yeah, well, I would say um, it's not Git Python's problem, but I could also say, well, maybe um, fetch will not try to do it. I mean, what I'm thinking is that fetch shouldn't, shouldn't prompt for anything if it's not connected to a TTY but apparently it doesn't check for that. It doesn't care because, you know, where do you want to get user input from? Maybe they've changed it. Maybe this is an old Git version. I don't know. Um, so the only thing I think I could check is to see if we open STD in because if STD in is not connected for the fetch process, then it has no reason to ask for a prompt, right? It has no reason at all. And maybe this is how the fetch wants to wants to handle it. And yeah, I think I acknowledge this even though it's an old version of Git Python. And lots of stuff has changed, right? But let's have a look. Let's have a quick look at least. Um, yeah, let's close a few things down from the last session. I don't need the sidebar. And um, yeah, it's fetch here in particular, even though pull is probably quite similar. So as process true, uh, we don't do anything specific to the output. So I think then it will be happening here. I stream. So that's a boolean, I th suppose. I stream standard input file handle and it's none. So, st but wow, that's amazing. Um, yeah, so how does that even work? <laughs> it can't ask for anything, right? Is this something that changed? At some point, maybe. All this was, t I mean, problem with good blame is that it only tells you what touched it last time, right? It would be cool to look at the entire history of that particular line now. It's to totally possible, but uh, let's see. Fix good throw, uh, if not found previously, especially when it was explicit. Is there anything, any mention of std in? Index, index add, no. Wow, I call this a commit message. <laughs> Not bad. When did I write this? 2009, wow. Many, many years ago, and I'm still maintaining this thing. Amazing. So, which is good because it happens to be still maintainable, right? So I guess not too bad after all for software. And uh, 
yeah, as far as the only thing I can see here is that yeah, let's check out really old let's check out the version that he uses, right? Good checkout. Um we uh get tag, good checkout 0.3.2 RC1 on git command. Wow, so lots of lots of stuff has been happened has been added here. So what's iStream's default? Oh, that's the question here. None. This means it doesn't even open doesn't even open STD in. Okay, let's also check it here. Maybe it opens it explicitly, which I don't believe. No, no, no. Uh, Travis is still failing. Sad. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's check out uh, remote and see if this changes anything. Fetch. <clears throat> As process, kwrks. Does he explicitly do anything with kwrks? No, he doesn't. Standard. So apparently this helper line must then force git to try something which should fail with a, with an error 13 or something because it tries to read from a pipe that isn't even or from a channel that isn't even open. Or maybe it's I don't I don't honestly I can't I can't understand what's going on here. Because this username prompt that must come from some other side then. Maybe the thing is that the daemon, the git credential cache, if this is not running, if it's running, then it works. If it's not running, then it asks for credentials and blocks the process. But it this means git opens std in explicitly. Can it even do that? Apparently it can, but I'm not listening on it. I'm not connected to that one. Yeah. Good source. Ah, oh, now I get it. Even though I'm not connected, I'm not connecting STD in um, to the pull or push. They will call git receive or something which then opens std in and does what it does. I think this is why that happens. I see. And it also seems to be hard coded in there. And yeah. So I don't think I can do anything here unless there is some flag that you can set to prevent std in. Um, Uh, in the previous query, there was something how to avoid. See, <laughs> yeah, well, setting up SSH is certainly one way to avoid it. But I was hoping, <sighs> I was hoping to have something that will. Do it differently. Some way of telling Git to not do what it does. Yeah. The checkout I have here is certainly not the latest, so it could could be kind of in sync with what Ubuntu has there, and I don't think they changed the STD in handling too much. This is a bundle. Yeah. Maybe I'm even looking at the wrong thing, but I, th I think I'm not too wrong uh, assuming that um, pull v will eventually launch a different process that will deal with the communication of, you know, get receive pack, I think is what happens there. And if that opens STD in any way, then, you know, then things happen. Yeah, I'm not sure about what I can do here. Because it's all just hard coded here. 
Good receive pack. Uh, maybe there's something hidden in the manual. Man, good receive. Yeah. So what can you do? Oh, nothing. Push cert key. Okay, maybe that's not the program that does it. Send pack, but it should be the program that does it. So what can this helper do? How's it called? Get credential cache. Get credential cache. Okay, my shell is confused there. <clears throat> Cache is credential memory for use by future get commands. The start credentials never touch the disk and are forgotten after configurable timeout. The cache is accessible over a Unix domain socket. Okay. And this is what, what Git will, what the Git processes will ask. Okay. So the number of times the user must enter the password. Yeah. I wonder if it's encrypted in memory or if it's just put there so that sneaky hackers could pull out the unencrypted passwords. Yeah, I don't know. Could probably be hidden in the code helper. Credential. Probably it's this one. Clear. So that looks pretty pretty unencrypted maybe huh maybe maybe credential describe ask one <laughs> it's always so amazing to to look at uh, c code which is so pure because you kind of handled everything and they're already good because they has, has some functions here that allow them to manipulate strings more easily which wasn't always the case you know sometimes if you want to add to a string you would do all the mem copying yourself and you know anyway <laughs> amazing but yeah what do i care if it's encrypted or not uh, the point is that i don't think i can do anything here I don't I don't think so. You have to prevent the Yeah. Maybe I find this in the git code and maybe there's something that would help me to find some flag that I can set to prevent uh prompts. So if the socket path is not explicitly set, it will use this one. Okay, but that's the only. So how do you how do, how do the programs know they should use that socket path? Oops. Ah, no wait, that's a credential cache demon. They keep it in a global serve cache. Yeah. So how how do you how do they ask the credential helper? Credential diff fast import HTTP push <laughs> helper status. Hmm. Obviously, I'm I'm searching for the needle in the haystack and hope that something pops out at me. Uh, whatever helper status is, report helper, transport. There are probably a lot of helpers in there. Maybe I should search for password. Credential store. OK, 
Cash Demon, Credential. So maybe with good config, you can kind of do it somehow. Strip username and password from URL, URL match. Lots of ways to get credentials here. Oh, this X keychain they use as well. Amazing. <laughs> Win cred. Yeah, I don't I don't see it. Sorry. I don't know. Good Python. Yeah. Thanks for the elaborate description. It seems that good Python is not even opening STD in in the processes. It uh, instantiates um, yet the sub processes um, good fetch um, opens seem to open std in by default, apparently, they also they also don't care um, whether or not they are connected to a TTY. Um, I couldn't find any option or a configuration that would prevent it from trying any prompts. It shouldn't, shouldn't mean they don't. Such an option doesn't exist. Well, there is nothing I can do here. From my point of view, there is nothing, uh, nothing good Python can do to help with such a situation. Mm, yeah. Just let me know if you think differently about it. There we go. Yeah. So maybe he will close the issue if he thinks likewise. Otherwise, we might figure something out. Let's see. Thank you. Thanks for your feedback. There we go. Let's put it to, yeah, it can be both, right? It can be acknowledged because I know that this can happen. And now we are waiting for feedback as well. Cool. So that should be that session. Thanks for watching and have a great day.